What if we tell you that in Niger, a man can marry various women at the same time and live with all of them? Or what if all these women are actual sisters? If that does not seem shocking, what about the bride's family paying the groom for the marriage in respect? Not only that, but in certain tribes, men can steal each other's wives, and some married women can have various sexual partners. But how does this happen, given that Niger is 99% Muslim? Above all, how are these customs considered normal in Niger's society? And how do people actually practice them? How do various women marry a single man and live together? While in other cases, how can the same woman have various partners? Welcome to a new episode of Black Africa Diary, a channel where we talk about Black African history, culture, arts, and civilization. It's a place where you will see the real picture of Black Africa, its stories, and the events defining it. In this episode, we will tell you about some shocking practices in Niger that you won't believe. Let's get started. Number one, sororal polygamy. In Niger, sororal polygamy represents a unique form of polygamous marriage, where a man takes multiple sisters from the same family as his wives. Yes, this is quite different from ordinary polygamy, where a man chooses and marries various women from different families. In this case, keeping equality between all wives might become a challenge. However, in sororal polygamy, all wives are actually sisters, which makes the marriage beneficial. It strengthens family bonds and maintains unity. By marrying sisters, a man ensures that familial ties remain interconnected, reinforcing support systems and resources within the extended family. Economically, sororal polygamy offers practical solutions to challenges faced by many families in Niger. By consolidating resources and labor within the family unit through marrying sisters, households can better manage economic hardships, especially in rural areas where agricultural or livestock-based livelihoods are common. You see, every practice that the West passes judgment on has actually valid reasons behind it. Moreover, sororal polygamy can elevate a man's social standing and prestige within his community. Having multiple wives, particularly sisters, is viewed as a symbol of wealth, masculinity, and the ability to manage a large household effectively. This can enhance the man's social status and solidify his position within the community. In terms of living arrangements, sororal polygamous households have common living spaces within the same household, promoting cooperation and unity among them and their children. While each wife may have specific responsibilities, such as cooking or childcare, there is often a sense of shared duties and mutual support among them. Number two, married women can have various partners. In certain tribes in Niger, particularly among specific ethnic groups, married women engage in relationships with multiple partners. This practice, known as polyandry, stands in contrast to the more common practice of polygyny, where men have multiple wives. In Niger, polyandry involves a woman being married to multiple husbands simultaneously, and it's often deeply ingrained in the cultural and societal norms specific to these tribes. However, it's not essential that a woman must marry all men she likes. She can be married to one man and can have a sexual relationship with another until she feels she should marry that person. All this gives the woman power and authority because more men compete for her and know that they might have to share her with other men. Polyandry in Niger serves various purposes, reflecting the distinct dynamics within these communities. Primarily, it can be understood through an economic lens. In regions where resources are scarce or economic opportunities are limited, Polyandry can be viewed as a practical solution. By sharing a wife, brothers, or close relatives, combine their resources and efforts to support the household, improving their collective chances of survival and prosperity. Additionally, polyandry in Niger is sometimes associated with inheritance practices and land ownership. By keeping property within the family or clan, polyandrous arrangements ensure that land and other assets remain under the control of the extended family rather than being divided among individual heirs. Moreover, in areas where population growth is a concern or resources are strained, polyandry can regulate family size. By limiting the number of children each husband has, polyandrous marriages may contribute to maintaining a sustainable population level within the community. The living arrangements in polyandrous households can vary, depending on the specific cultural context and circumstances of the families involved. Some households may have the husbands share a dwelling and rotate their time with the wife. 
while others may have them living separately, but collaborating on household and economic responsibilities. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Black Africa. Let's continue now. Number three, stealing each other's wives, the Woda B tribe in Niger practices a distinctive cultural tradition called Garawal, where men have the chance to steal each other's wives. The Garawal festival is the main event for this tradition, typically held annually during the dry season after the rains have ended. It's a lively and vibrant occasion where Wodabi men gather to showcase their beauty and charm in front of eligible women. During the festival, Wodabi men participate in what can be described as a beauty contest. They dress in elaborate traditional attire, adorned with colorful clothing, feathers, beads, and face paint. Alongside this, they perform traditional dances and display their singing skills. Women from the tribe act as judges during the contest. They closely observe the men's performances, evaluating their attractiveness, charisma, and overall appeal. After the performances, the women collectively choose the man they find most desirable. You should know that these are married women, but the custom allows them to pick any man they find attractive. In Wadabi culture, physical beauty carries significant weight, with men who possess it being seen as more desirable marriage prospects. Once the women have made their choice, there's an opportunity for men to steal wives. The most attractive man, selected by the women, may approach a married woman and negotiate with her husband for her hand in marriage. While the term stealing is used, it's essential to understand that this process is consensual. The woman's consent is crucial, and negotiations often involve agreement from both the woman and her current husband. If everyone agrees, the woman may choose to leave her current spouse and marry the man who has stolen her. The man whose wife has been stolen might himself steal another man's wife, and the cycle continues. Surprisingly, this practice is widely accepted within the Wodabe community. Marriage is seen as a flexible and adaptable institution, and wife-stealing during the Garwal festival is considered a legitimate way for men to find partners. After a wife has been stolen and remarried, she becomes part of her new husband's family and takes on the associated responsibilities. While the previous husband may feel a sense of loss, the community generally respects the outcome of the negotiations. Number four, bridal virginity test. In Niger, there's a long-standing tradition of testing a bride's virginity, deeply embedded in cultural and religious beliefs. Certain communities place immense importance on a bride's purity, seeing it as crucial for upholding family honor, and they expect her to remain celibate until marriage. This tradition often involves conducting physical examinations to check the hymen as a way to confirm the woman's purity before she ties the knot. Cultural norms vary significantly across different societies, with practices considered outdated or unacceptable in one culture holding considerable value in another. In Niger, bridal virginity testing is viewed as a means of preserving cultural and religious values, as well as safeguarding family honor and the sanctity of marriage. However, the West cannot help but pass judgment while not knowing the indigenous culture. Often, it's ignored that moral and ethical values are shaped by the cultural context in which they emerge. Thus, grasping the deep cultural significance of bridal virginity testing in Niger demands an understanding of its context and societal norms. Number five, leverate marriage. Leverate marriage is a cultural tradition where a man is obligated to marry his deceased brother's widow. In Niger, this custom holds significant influence among several ethnic groups, each infusing it with unique interpretations and practices. Among the prominent tribes in Niger, the Hausa ethnic group regards leverate marriage as vital for maintaining familial lineage and ensuring the welfare of the widow and her children following her husband's passing. In Hausa culture, it's customary for the deceased husband's brother to marry the widow, thereby fulfilling familial responsibilities and providing support to both the widow and any offspring from the previous marriage. Similarly, the Kanuri people of Niger uphold leverate marriage for comparable reasons, emphasizing the importance of preserving family connections and ensuring the well-being of the widow and her children. Rooted deeply in Kanuri tradition, this practice serves as a homage to the memory of the departed husband while offering stability and protection to his widow. In the Tuareg community of Niger, leverate marriage is also practiced, albeit with distinct rituals and customs. Within Tuareg society, this tradition often intersects with concepts of inheritance rights and property ownership. Following a man's death, his widow may be inherited by his brother, 
ensuring the preservation of the deceased's assets within the family and their eventual transfer to his heirs. Additionally, leverate marriage among the Tuareg contributes to maintaining social and economic balance within the community. Isn't it true that these practices cannot be applied to the whole of Niger? Do you believe these customs should be respected? And should the Western world not be allowed to pass judgment and teach how things are done right? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on which of these practices you found intriguing. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on Black Africa, its history, rich arts and culture, and things the world should know about. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.